hey, my name is Polish Links. Let's go. This is the Huntsman Winter's Curse. Inner battle in abandoned castle in Elizabeth's thoughts. In Elizabeth's mind? More correctly, probably. Let's go. You mean we're within your mind? That's impossible. It's possible. I am a fire breathing. Nothing is impossible. I bet Silver Gaze focuses more strongly on Marcus. But you should not be here. These are not your battles. I fought by your side this long. I will not stop now. Yet, where is our foe? They are coming. I sense it. I said points in the distance as a shadow figure materializes. A giant wolf, the wolf that was once Elizabeth's brother George, lopes toward them. But he's dead. We killed him. Not here. George's spirit haunts my thoughts and heart. Other spirits do. There is no end to their grief. Elizabeth extends a hand toward the wolf. The wolf starts. Marcus raises his staff. <laughs> of course. Because the, there is no name to his staff. Would you slay my brothers once more, Marcus? The wolf leaps on at Elizabeth. If they attacked you, yes. <sighs> Wait, this one is more colorful in here. Look at this. Four. And there should be one more attack of ten. That's nice. And look at this. Look at this. Look at what magic is happening around. I don't even know what's going on. To be honest. But seriously, the beginning of the battle is like... Amazingly great bonus for me. That's all you've got? Fifteen. Oh crap, twenty-five. So you used some magic on yourself to have the booster uh, to your attacks again. See, 23. Again, the booster. I'm sure of this. 12. And the defensive wall. This defensive wall. And this plus healing. Not much of healing, but always something. Oh. 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 Well. Take this. And how about this? And that won't really help you, man. Sorry, but I have this. And this ends it by basically. As the wolf falls, he disappears, and Elizabeth's brother George appears in his place. So at last, I'm free. Hold no pain on my account, dear sister. My choices were on my own. Farewell. George turns from Elizabeth and walks away, fading with each step. He's gone, truly gone, this time. I'm sorry. Yet I'm not. Isn't that strange? I feel instead like a wave has been lifted from me. A spidery figure materializes in the distance. That would be Thomas. As the spider rose near, it leaps at Elizabeth. And bonuses, please. Give me all the bonuses. Give me bonuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonuses. Look at that. Free attacks from the starter, basically. One went first for here. Maybe even more if I play this correctly. Yes, four. <laughs> but he will have two in a row. Unless, unless this will work the way I think it might. Nope, didn't work. Uh, however, I could stun him. Uh, oh, but counter attack, yes. Okay, that's true. Spider was able to heal himself. What did you do? Decrease the speed, okay. Uh, 10.
Might be wrong, but this battle looks easier than the previous one with the wolf somehow. I think it will end faster a bit. Right choice, I'm not sure. Attack and heal, okay. I like the music now in the background actually. Counter, yeah. And we win. As the spider falls, he disappears, and Elizabeth's brother Thomas appears in his place. So we come to the end of our last battle together. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Once I'd have hurt you if I could, but I wish you no harm. You, I wish you harm no more. I only hope one day you will forgive me. I already have, Thomas. Do you forgive me? Uh, I'm sorry as well. Are you? I would not have expected it. Yet there is no lying in this place. I cannot say if you were right or well to take my life, but that is no matter if it is done. Be at peace, both of you. Farewell. Farewell, Elizabeth. Thomas turns from Elizabeth and walks away, fading with each other's step. These farewells do not feel like tragedies, not as they did the first time. I feel lighter with each one, and stronger too, as if I've been relieved of a heavy burden. A shadowy bear materializes in distance, and his breath catches. No, not Michael. How can I hurt the brother who never wished to hurt me? Yet these are no ordinary battles, and I sense I dare not turn away from them. The bear hesitates as it reaches the bed. Their gazes meet, and then the bear draws a deep breath and leaps at his bed. So basically, we are pre pre preparing right now for the battle, for the final battle, I think. More, both physically and mentally. Mostly mentally right now. That's my opinion. That that won't be an easy fight, I'm sure of this right now. Because he has a lot of health already. Too much, in my opinion. <laughs> but never mind that. Uh, go with 11. I could actually... Uh, whatever. Let's leave it for the next attack. Counter, yes. You know, the 7 attack, the 7. Yeah, so you can randomly hit him with another 7. Heal by 10, no. But seriously, I need a third companion. Why there's no third companion? <laughs> I was asking for having one for the whole time, I guess. And at least from the 4th book. And still... Not having one. Uh, ten. What? 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 Oh, that's right. You are buffered, but and crippled and crippled and. Okay, let's use this one. It's a bit of waste, but. Alright. Healing doesn't really have a point now, in my opinion. Oh crap. You have additional 15 of damage. That's not good. That's not good at all. Twenty one of oh. that won't be much of help. Oh. Attack of twenty. You've got to be kidding me. Sorry, bro, but you are going down with a kick. As the bear falls, he appears, and his best brother Michael appears in his place. I'm sorry, Michael. So sorry. Do not cry, little sister. There's no place for tears. You have slain nothing more than the guilt you held for me in your heart. I still live out in the world and remain free. Because of you, I know that we'll meet again. 
I shall look forward to that meeting then. Isaac embraces her brother. Michael disappears from within her arms. A shadowy salamander materializes. Jonathan! The salamander breathes dark flames as he draws near. The flames travel much farther than when he was alive. Jonathan does not wait for this battle to be joined. He starts even before he reaches us, forcing us to rush at him instead. Hundred and eighty. But we have the ability to attack from from now on. Ten? Something more? Yes. Four four Oh you bastard, you can do this as well. Let's go. Healing myself right now doesn't have a point. Search and plus two attack, okay. A good point of not being good in this type of games and not playing on very high difficulty is that I can basically choose whatever I want and win. So basically I'm playing offensively, very offensively. God damn it, what the heck? Oh you have plus ten. Okay. Counter, yes. If I can stun you now. Can't, okay. Whoa. Well, this is the end. As the Salamander falls, he appears and takes with brother Jonathan appears in his place. Do not expect me to offer words of absolution like the others. I would do the same again, and if I ever any regret, it's only that I failed in the end. John Dan runs from his bed and walks away, disappearing into the mist. Wow, what a piece of crap, brother, actually. Even in John Dan's departure, there's peace. The peace of knowing there was nothing more I could do. And so the last battle is finished. Yet what are we do to, no to do now? I know not how to leave this place. And their shadowy figure approaches. I think we are not finished after all. The shadowy figure grows closer. Elizabeth gasps. But it's... that's. I'm sorry, but I too am one of the Enchantress creations. I'm afraid you are going to have to kill me as well. Emerald Serpent. Emerald Serpent. What I have now is attack of 10 and 10. And this thing, 13 and 7. Heal, heal, stun. I'm staying with the Raven's Claw. Definitely. Almost level up. By the way. Alright, Abandoned Castle, the Wave of Corruption. Marcus stares at his spirit, calms her part, and slowly rises his staff. Elizabeth steps between them. I will not let you attack him! It's no more than I deserve. You're the one who said we dare not turn away from those battles. This isn't the spirit of your animal self, he's you. Marcus stares deep in the eyes of his spirit self. His spirit self stares back. What are you, Reed? Reach. Attack. Reach. Marcus lowers his staff and reaches a hand towards his spirit self. His spirit self reaches back. You know, the corruption will be better than anyone. You see it all. Every flaw, every temptation, I fought to resist. I see it all. The spirit clasps Marcus' hands. Marcus shudders and falls to the ground, motionless as if dead. Marcus! Elizabeth's hand moves to her sword, then falls away. Spirit Marcus raises his staff but does not advance. What do you wait for? You know well enough you want to avenge the harm I done to him. Talk. Why not attack me if you are so eager to battle? For battle. I wait for you to strike the first blow. All of my brothers attack first. If you want to attack me, I won't attack you. It's clear enough, you and Marcus are linked. You are not like the others we fought. This is true. 
I always was the weakest of the Enchantress creations. Too much of my own self remained, even when I was a raven. Yet that was not enough to save me. You don't know the temptations I have fought. I must corrupt as the worst of your brothers. You've been touched by great darkness, yes, but it does make you dark. You always did want to see me the best in you. Yet, you don't know how hard it was for me to turn my back on the Enchantress. You don't know how I feel the pull of her magic, even now urging me to evil acts. You don't know how many times I nearly lashed out with my killing touch to make deadly work of those who crossed my path. I know all the times that I failed to resist and did lash out too. My soul is a shadow place, Elizabeth, I long for death. Won't you grant it for me? Whose soul is without shadows? You work so hard to see the good in people, yet know this, I would no more hesitate to kill you than your brothers even now. Why do you think I tracked you to the ruins of this castle, if not to slay you? I would have welcomed your death, were you not the stronger of us. You and Marcus are not the same after all, if you think he would welcome my death. Even, he, uh, even were he to attack me, it would only be because he felt he had no better choice. Given the harm I have done, he might be right. Given the harm I have done, he might be right. You are a fool. A fool who believes in stories and so cannot see what is right in front of you. I am a hateful creature who is not worthy of love. Worthy of love? Do you think you get to decide whether you are worthy of love? That's not how it works. Oh, Elizabeth, attack me and end this now. This is no fairy tale. I'll be the judge of that. Happy things don't just happen. We have to make them. Try to shake Marcus awake. Try to kiss Marcus awake. Alright. Another attempt of Elizabeth. Boom. Elizabeth turns away from Spirit Marcus and kneels beside Marcus. And this is the ending I choose. A kiss to wake you, Marcus, and prove you are worthy of love after all. You always have been whatever you might believe. Elizabeth kills Marcus. Marcus stares, opens his eyes, and looks up at her. A kiss. You woke me with a kiss. What else? It worked, didn't it? How is that possible? Death was the only way free for me. I have long known this. I'd not like that ending, so I choose another. There are no opinions. I do not believe in them. And yet I believe I'm beginning to. I would not have thought that possible either. Elizabeth draws Marcus to his feet. She is kinder to you than I am. Yeah, she always been. Marcus takes Elizabeth's hands in his own, as he does. Spirit Marcus turns from them and walks away, disappearing in the mist. Elizabeth and Marcus draw apart as they hear the sound of wing beats. Ah, of course. A giant eagle flies across the plain and lands beside Elizabeth and Marcus. Elizabeth takes a step back. This fairy tale isn't over yet, after all. Wisps follow in the eagle's wake and surround Elizabeth and Marcus. Wait, what? That's not what I was supposed to fight now. Hello? That's not the opponent I wanted to fight. What's the meaning of this? Hello? Target. Boom. Oh yeah, I can destroy it very fast. I'm glad. But I probably won't, because I don't have the attack of 14. I so wish I had one like that. Actually, I had both seven, but I couldn't use it now. Alright, attack with the stick. Slightly longer stick. Uh, random. That doesn't matter, actually, no. Ow! <laughs> Seriously, bro. Oh, come on. No bonus already. Give me bonus. Because. Because I said so. <laughs> I ran out of tea and. That's quite problematic. Okay, 12.
Oh, I'm still in the offense. Uh, 14. That's how it's done. One more foot go. Yet the eagle does not attack me, so I will not attack he her. Death has served me well so far. The eagle stares at his bed. His bed staggers back. What is it? What's wrong? I feel as if those eyes can see into my very soul. They remind me without words of my all my failures. Failures? What failures? You are stronger than anyone I know. The eagle keeps staring at his bed. His bed staggers further back. She knows that my brave words hide the coward's heart. I'm quick to raise a sword in battle, yet I defend a one, no one, I only destroy. You've saved many people, myself included. I still see the destruction I wrought and smell the smoke from the flames. I remember the homes and lifelike hoods. Lifelike hoods of innocence I took away as I crossed the countryside, wearing my eagle's trade. It was the enchantress, no you. She played the part, but I'm still to blame. My weakness allowed it. And then Vardhelm. Vartham has fallen, and I lifted no sword, breathed no flame in its defense, my home is lost, and I did nothing to save it. Did I imagine myself a warrior, having grand adventures and performing noble deeds? The moment I met the Enchantress, I fell before her as a leaf in the wind. Were I stronger, or if I hid, had heeded your warnings? Marcus, would he be here now? I owe myself to be lured by power, after all, just like my brothers. Elizabeth falls to her knees as the eagle keeps staring at her. She's my mother, Marcus. You worried so about the corruption in your blood, yet I was born bearing that blood. Nothing can change that, nothing. You're the one who told me there's no resisting the Enchantress power. Oh no 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 you don't! You won't believe me beyond redemption. I won't believe in of you not now, not ever again. Yes, you've failed in some ways, so have we all, but I've seen your fearlessness, your fears will do battle when it's needed. Your equally fierce unwillingness to do battle when it's not, those are part of you too. The eagle keeps staring at Elizabeth, Elizabeth slowly glances at Marcus. I followed your path here, Elizabeth, there may have been destruction, but I saw how you fought the corruption. How you avoided the most densely populated areas and directed your flames towards the outskirts. I do not know where you found the strength, but you have been resisting the Enchantress valiantly. I feel her inside me, even now. She says there is no room for failure. She says my failures will destroy me, and yet they haven't, have they? Instead, I learn from my failures, but also remember my successes. That's true, you always learn from failures. I saved Michael, when none believed that possible. I would have saved John Tattoo if he had let me. Elizabeth smiled at Marcus. And I saved you as well, for you believe you were beyond redemption. I have already done the impossible, and even now I resist the darkness my mother seeks to sow within me. My failures and fears have no power over me, unless I let them. The spirit eagle screams in agony. You do not control me, mother. I do not pretend to be perfect, but all my actions, successes, and failures both are my own. The eagle rises in the sky and disappears. The mist disappears, leaving Marcus standing by Elizabeth's side in the abandoned castle. Marcus' hand falls away from Elizabeth's medallion as she blinks and opens her eyes. The eagle mask turns to ash and crumbles away. Beneath it, Elizabeth's silvery eyes are revealed. It's morning. We fought the whole night. Sorry about that. Elizabeth lifts a hand to her face. I'm free. I have defeated more than my own fears here, after all. Elizabeth and Marcus hear footsteps on the stairs. Elizabeth gets to her feet and moves to Marcus' side. The Enchantress strides into the room, glancing around nonchalantly. What a ruin this place is! Freya sure doesn't mess around, does she? The Enchantress fixes her gaze on Marcus. Does it go to you that you, even in your defiance, Marcus, you led me straight to me, my quarry when my connection to Elizabeth failed? Ghostly spirits swirl and collapses around the Enchantress as she glances back at Elizabeth. What a touching scene this all it is. It almost makes me sorry to have to hurt you. <laughs> oh, come on, one point, seriously. Abandoned castle, the Medallion's power. Let's check. 
What the I do you hide? You have rejected my last gift, you, daughter. Here I thought you were such an obedient child. No matter, you have found her just away. Give me the medal now. No. That was not request. Come here, daughter. Then Chandra stretches his hand towards the bed. His bed remains where she is. You have no power over me. Not anymore. I have defeated worse than you this night. I'm stronger than you thought. I'm stronger than I thought. You are indeed. I'm proud of you, daughter. Bring me the medallion, and we shall walk together instead. You've never shared anything. Yeah, have you not yet heard to be signed, Marcus? The enchanter searches hand toward Marcus. Marcus smiles. It seems I too am free. The medallion at his bed? I'll not ask you again, it's mine. Mine to give to you and mine to take back again. You left the medallion, even as you left me. It's mine now. We'll see about that. My minions, take the medallion now! Minions? Okay, I defeated these minions so many times already. You are stupid to l l try them to attack me. Alright, the center one is going down first. What do we have here? Attack of 12, obviously. And how about double 7? Oh, it went randomly, but it hit here as well, so it's not so terrible. Alright, try healing yourself, why not? You keep shield, I won't attack you first. I don't have the... Uh. Alright, I will attack with you for 10. If I go with 4, I probably will have the attack for of 10. So, let's do it like this. Uh, boom, and boom. Huh? Huh? Sometimes I can come up with good ideas. You give yourself another shield. Well, and I won't pay attention to you. I will take down this one. Right, randomly. And of course, he had to go there. Alright, he has the defense of 10, so that's quite problematic. But it doesn't mean I can't win in here. Come on, bam. Five points. And five points. Right. Five points, so eight. Yeah, it will do that job. How's it going? Right, 10 points. I have 3 attacks in a row, so... Nice. By the way, I'm still full at health, somehow. I think there's a full health, actually. Not really sure, but... But it looks like that. Told you, your minions are no opponents to me. You have grown strong, daughter. I said it in your eyes. I see it in your eyes. Sorry. Yet you need someone to show you how to use the strength of giving the medallion. No, it's because I'm strong that I won't let you have it. You naughty, naughty girl. It is you who forced me to do this. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Oh come on! And you use minions as well? You stupid old hag. Okay, she's not really old hag, but what I had to call her that. All right. First of all, minions. Minions. Oh, actually, these are spirits, but she calls them minions. Let's take them down. Attack of twenty. My goodness. This is cheating. But I have counter attack 12. <laughs> Don't buffer. Okay, so you have prevents damage. Well, I won't attack you now, so you know. There was no really point in using this. Don't attack me. Oh, fuck. 
and target target all right let's go with this hopefully it can hit this one yes too bad it hit this one instead of this one but okay it's okay and this, this. we can do this we can oh you bitch again with the 20 attack Don't. Oh, you fucking. Old hack, can you stop using that attack? Okay, let's go with this one actually. Good, 14 of oh, damage for her. Buffer, so I won't attack her for one turn. And right now I will do this. Don't even go with 20. Good. Target here. And healing can be don't. Okay, 11. Not so terrible. Ah, god damn it. Too bad I can counter attack like the other uh, opponent. 18, 12, 9, 8. Let's go with a. Nine. I'm not, not sure what attacks he has. Yes, ten. Okay. Could have gone with eight after all. Oh come on, you cheater! Don't even think about twenty again. Okay. Let's heal. this how oh, you oh come on okay healing, healing is needed now for sure but we have a bonus bonus to the attack so Don't even think about 20 again because she's allowed to use that 20 attack way too often. Okay, let's risk. Oh, come on, you fucking whore! Fucking bitch. This should disappear right now. 12. God damn. Stun this bitch. Oh, for fuck's sake! You've got to be fucking kidding me! 20 again? How many of these attacks do you get in your cards, you fucking... With what am I supposed to defeat her? God damn it! Of course you have to buffer, and now I can't really deal any damage to you, fucking piece of crap. And she has two turns in a row, that's fucking cheating. Of course attack of 20 again. What the fuck is that? Yeah, that counter attack was so useful, you know.
Look, attack 12 and heal 12. What the fuck? Yes. Alright. You heal all. And you go with 20. Don't you even... Fuck! Of course she buffered again. And healed herself. God damn it. Attack. Having laugh in the team would be so great this at this moment as well. Oh of course twenty. She had to use that in that fucking bitch. Heal. Oh fuck. You see? Okay, let's stun her. Now if I had the, I had the 21. Oh shit. I would end her with the 20 there. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Yes. Holy crap! Finally! Okay, so it's possible. It's somehow possible, okay? Whew, the judges fights firstly. Mercilessly, but Elizabeth and Marcus blows struck through. At last, with a gasp, she falls, clutching her chest as blood pours from her wounds. I'm sorry, I'm dead. I have had you at the last. My desire for power was too great. Forgive me. I forgive you, mother. As but leans close to the enchantress, that's not a good idea. I forgive you, mother. The enchantress long launches at Elizabeth and tries to tear the medallion away from her. True power will be mine! What purpose is there in having children if not this? A string on the medallion breaks as the enchantress snatches it from Elizabeth. Elizabeth gasps for breath as she snatches it back. The medallion begins to glow with cold light. Light pours out of the medallion towards the enchantress. It flows like molten liquid over her body, encasing her in light. The enchantress falls to her knees. What is this? This is not supposed to... The enchantress' words are cut short by a cry. No, this can't be... No! There is a blinding flash of light, and when the light disappears, the enchantress is gone, absorbed by the medallion. Esbeth looks back and forth between the spot where the enchantress used to be and the medallion she holds. The glow of the medallion slowly dissipates. What just happened? Esbeth tries ties the medallion string back around her neck before she speaks. I think I think my mother's amulet has protected me. At the least, at the last, even from her. Perhaps there was something in her once that really did care for me. Or perhaps her lust for power caused her to overlook something? Elizabeth examines the medallion in her hand. It's cold now, like ice. She's truly gone, and I'm truly free. Of my doubts, of my fears, of the past. And yet, I feel power in me still. As do I. Power is free of the enchantress, taint or control. It seems too much to hope for. Nothing flowed in the medallion when my mask crumbled away. Not like with my brothers. Perhaps neither of us lost our magic when we defeated the enchantress. Elizabeth's hand moves to her medallion. Yet, I carry her with me still, and that is an uneasy thought. Let us take the medallion to the fairy sanctuary. If we do not know what to do with it, perhaps the fairies will. You trust in fairy magic as well, now? Not yet, but I'm learning. And with that, we did not level up. Alright, let's go, Enchantress Forest, a new beginning. 
I think we are close to an end now, so let's let's go. Elizabeth and Marcus enter the enchanted forest after an uneventful event, uneventful journey. Elizabeth leads Marcus into the hedge maze. Lights flickers, flicker in the distance. Truly, this is an enchanted place. What are those lights? Come, there's a pattern to the flashing that leads into the sanctuary. I'll show it to you. As that Marcus walk through the maze to where the path diverges, they see two lights, one for each path. The left one flickers once, the right one flickers three times. Go left. As it leads the way down the left path and arrives at another four. The left light flickers twice, the right one flickers once. Left. As it has left, around the corner and she, them, she and Marcus find the lights again. This time the left flickers just once, the right flickers three times. Go right. Elizabeth Marcus continues to follow the fairy lights flickering patterns through the hedge maze. Eventually, the light disappears directly into the wall at a dead end. This is where you left me before. I'm certain from here you must go on alone. I'm not going anywhere without you. Here, take my hand. We'll go together. Your faith in me is admirable, but... Admirable and justified. Look, the hedge is parting for us. Come! Elizabeth Marcus emerged in a fair glade. Fairies approach from all sides. They reach out to touch Elizabeth and Marcus. And that's not how I imagine fairy. Set by me. One more time. How can it be? What fairy would touch me? Do you at last believe you are free of corruption? I have no choice but to believe. The fairy Elizabeth rescued clients under her shoulder and gestures towards her medallion. Yeah, I want to remove it too. Yet I cannot, not without risking my very life. The fairy reaches for the flowers Elizabeth carries. You want this back? Grateful as I am for the gift, that is fair enough. They have been of great use to me, but the stories say fairies don't like to be thanked, so I'll stop there. Edward gives the fairy the flowers. The fairy takes them, then gestures towards Elizabeth's medallion. Elizabeth takes it in her hands as she removes the strap from around her neck. She gasps for breath as she stops wearing the medallion, but then the fairy brings the flowers to her face. Elizabeth breathes deeply. Ah, I feel how those flowers breathe new life into my being. Light that is no longer tied to the medallion, any more than my magic is. The fairy flowers glow with gold lights. One by one the flowers fall, dissolving into the air before they reach the ground. The fairy gestures towards the medallion Elizabeth still holds. You wish to give it to me? Me to give it to you? Very well, you have yet to lead me astray. Will you guard it for us? It would put my heart at ease to know this enchanted glade is my mother's final resting place. It would put my heart at ease to know the enchantress is being kept safely away from the world. The fairy not solely, it departs with the medallion in its arms, accompanied by the other fairies. At last, Elspeth and Marcus are alone. It grows dark. It's, I suppose the sun must set even on this enchanted place. Do you think they will mind if we spend the night here? I think the first would have let us know, even if they didn't want us here. This is fitting enough a place for this story to end. Is the story over then? Marcus takes Elizabeth's hands and kisses her. Elizabeth laughs. What was that for? That is how stories end, isn't it? With a kiss. You understand such things better than me. That's one way, yeah, but I won't let you set the ending of my story. Elizabeth kisses Marcus back. There, that's better. It is, indeed. Elizabeth Marcus spent the night in the first sanctuary. And you know what they did. They slept, obviously. At first light they are gone, no one sees them leave. But the few travelers who pass that way speak of a strange sight. An eagle and a raven flying off into the distance together. An eagle and a raven flying towards a distant horizon, That's just... leaving a dark spirit under guard in the bright forest behind them. Where they go, none can follow. Or so the stories say. Happily ever after. The end. Forever. Yet where does the storyteller come from, if not a place beyond the end of the story? Where do stories come from, if not beyond the same horizon where an eagle and a raven disappear from view? Watch them go. See how they carry with them this final truth that, ever after, are never the last words. They are merely the place that one fairy tale ends and another begins. So are you Elizabeth because your eyes are quite silvery? 
Alright. That was the Huntsman Winter's Curse. I, I must say, after the release of the book 4 and 5, there were quite difficulties, but the game itself isn't is isn't so bad, I would say. But it's pretty good, and well, I guess I'm happy I bought the season pass for it. So yeah, this is it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the whole series, basically. And see you in the next game, or just check the other that are on, on the channel already. Alright, see you then, bye.